Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here with another word from the book of Ephesians, starting at verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not once be named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, no, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Do you hear that? <laughs> For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now, this is what I want to say. What we don't realize is God is not playing. We think that because he is merciful, he's kind, he's He's, he's always giving tender mercies, he's understanding, he's patient, he's long-suffering, he's a good God. But this good God has a bad side, and you don't want to be on his side, not that side. Stay on his good side. You don't want to experience the bad side of God. There is a wrath now. I remember when my parents used to, <laughs> I remember the whoopings. I remember the belt. I remember laying over my father's knee. And I remember the pain. Mm -hmm. And there are some times when a child has to feel pain in order to actually get the revelation that you ain't supposed to be doing this. This is wrong. Then... When the parents take the time to explain how and why it's wrong, it enlightens you to a higher level of understanding. So not only does the pain drive the point home, but their explanations do as well. And what God is trying to show us is what we think we can get away with it's no go. We will not taste of the fruits of the benefits of living for God. We will not experience eternal bliss. We will not experience the blessings of God if we are taking his commandments lightly. If we are playing and toying, playing church, playing Christianity, using God as a good luck charm, throw a cross on our neck and think we're going to ward off all bad things from happening in our lives, carry a Bible in our hand so we can advertise for him every once in a while. It doesn't go like that. Talking Christian on Sunday, on Sabbath, talking smut on Monday through Friday, it doesn't go like that. You can't praise God and curse man. You can't bless and glorify the Lord and cuss your son out. 
It doesn't go like that. God wants cleanliness. Listen, when I was in the hospital, I had to trust that the doctors, the surgical staff, the surgical team sanitized their instruments. Now, I didn't have surgery, but I had a procedure. I had to trust that they sanitized all their instruments, sanitized the bed I had to lay on, that their hands were clean, that they were fully sanitized. Because in order to do a procedure, in order to do surgery successfully, without the risk of infection from an outside source, everything has to be clean which means if the doctor has a cold, he can't take his sanitized hands and sneeze into his hand. He can't sneeze over me. He's got to have a mask over his face. He's got to have gloves on, sanitized hands, covered with sanitized gloves. I mean, everything has to be a sterile environment without which complications arise, which means infection, problems, complications, all kind of stuff can set up. So we have to be careful as Christians to live in a sterile environment because when we live haphazardly and we toy with Christianity and we tinker with sin, and we uh, glorify the Lord in church and raise holy hands, but then we lay down and we do the dirty when nobody can see us, when we're with our lover. And we think that because nobody can see us and God is busy handling big things, that he's not aware of the sin that's in our lives of the sinful habits that we have established because we have no fear of God. It doesn't mean that because he's not punishing us right then and there, that he's not aware. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when you sow to your flesh, you will reap destruction. And you, it may not happen this year. It may not happen for 10, 15 years down the line. You may find out you got full-blown AIDS. Or you may end up getting pregnant after the 10th time having sex. And your child may end up being a child straight from hell. That is the biggest curse of your life. So don't think you can play with God. I'm telling you, there are times when God will take you over his knee and he will prove to you who's who. You don't want to get on his bad side. That's all I got to say. Don't play, you won't pay. Be very careful how you handle your Christianity. It's better that you wait than to play both sides of the fence. You cannot straddle the fence with God. I'm sorry to tell you this because I know for some of you, you think it's okay because God's a good God. Oh, he ain't that good. And I'm here to tell you, there is a bad side to this good God. That's the one you never want to run into. So if I were you, I would say a prayer like this, Lord, I really don't fear you. And I know I take you for granted. And I'm living sloppy. So would you put the fear of God in me in the most merciful way? Give me a revelation of your power, not only of your love, but of your wrath, of your judgment, so that I will understand I can't play with you. I can't play games with my walk with you. 
Help me to understand that. Drive the point home, even in dreams and visions, however, even in the word. But help me to stop taking you for granted because I don't want to let that go. I don't want to stop doing so-and-so. And I know you're not happy with it. And I ask you to forgive me, have mercy, and help me to fear you enough to stop myself. Help me to fully repent and live a holy life that you truly require. Thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a good prayer to pray. Be honest with him. You don't want to stop sinning. You don't want to let that nookie alone. You don't want to stop getting high. You don't want to stop hanging with your sinful friends. You don't want to stop doing what you're big and bad enough to do. You got to ask God sometimes. Ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit after you ask him to forgive you. Because when you're like that, you need a new nature. And the Holy Spirit will give you a new nature. And you will suddenly find yourself too afraid or too sensitive to the fact that you're getting ready to cross the line and you get second thoughts, third thoughts, and you're like, well, maybe not. Maybe I better stop. Something begins to happen inside of you that stops you from taking God for granted, that stops you from taking chances and playing Russian roulette with your salvation, with your walk with God. Try it. That's what you need. You need the Holy Spirit. You need him living within you. You need the power of God moving in you. You need the power of God influencing your conscience. You need the power of God touching your heart with fruits of righteousness so that your flesh is not always in control. And when your flesh rises up, you then have the power and authority to rebuke those desires and keep on walking in God's way. God bless you with the victory.